Okay. So today we are gonna go over the camera projection. Um, so basically, it's gonna be about taking a 2D flat still image and turning it into 3D scene, and then yeah, using it for our shots, our backgrounds, and everything. So it's kind of like freezing the time as well. Um, we can always turn around in the scene. Um, we can use this uh, as a diffuse map and create a shader based on that. Um, so to get started, we do have a uh, scene. So this is um, a picture that been shot on uh, T3i Canon. Um, just a still image. Um, so the first thing we do is uh, getting rid of lens distortion in Nuke. Um, there's uh, two different alternatives actually. Um, if you don't do lens distortion, then you need to calculate your lens, yeah, the focal length that you used in your camera to take this photo and multiply that with your crop factor. Uh, because Maya doesn't have crop factor in it, but our cameras have it. So to demonstrate that, um, do you guys want to like start from scratch from an empty Maya file? Or go over it because it'll sure. take longer. Yeah, yeah, because maybe you spend a lot of time to create just Maya, and you just need to understand, right? Okay, I think that's also better because it will speed things up. Um, so basically, whenever we create a new camera inside Maya, um, we do have the focal length setting. This is our lens. Uh, so when I look at my um, image, I can quickly show it from here. Um, then I look at the details of the image that I took. I can see that it's 18 millimeters. But if I put that number in here as 18 millimeters, this is not the correct result because um, Maya doesn't have the crop factor as we, as we um, talked earlier. Uh, you can check out any camera's crop factor um, as we looked at in here. This has been shot with this camera. I can just copy this, paste it in here, and go to crop factor. So each camera has its own crop factor and it clearly says that it's 1.6. So in order to get the correct lens in Maya, I need to multiply my lens um, number with the crop factor, which is going to be 18, um, 1.6, which will give me 28.8. .8. And when I look at my camera in here, this is going to be 28. The reason why we have 28 instead of 28.8 .8 in here is that I applied um, lens distortion in Nuke. So this actually changes my lens information. As you can see on the edges specifically, there's a difference. If you want to keep things simple as much as possible, don't touch anything in Nuke, just import straight in, into Maya and just calculate it as we shown in here and just put those numbers and then start moving your camera around until it matches so and put this as my background image and just push it a little bit further until I see my background. Now I need to adjust it manually until I get a correct result and then all I need to do is just create simple boxes 
that matches with other stuff that I have in my scene. Note that I also have this go ghost mode on, so I can also see my background image as well. So to test things out, um, I can move my stuff around, see how it matches. Um, best spots are the corners, of course. So if I match this, doesn't really have to be perfect because you can always adjust it later. But just put something there as a placeholder so that you can always go ahead and um, adjust it. But I can see here that my lens is working. And also my depth is also working in here. So if you want to, like normally we bake our uh, camera projection maps in Nuke. But if you want to see your result in Maya while working, you can assign a surface shader. Um, and create a file. But when you create a file, you need to right click and then create as projection. So then you have this new menu and you will go to uh, perspective and then you need to also select your camera. So this will um, look at the camera's angle and project that image that you will give in here to the geometry. Um, we can also do the same thing in Nuke, the exact same thing, exact same steps. It's just that it's different nodes. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and project that image and assign this if I go to any perspective view I can clearly see that I just projected my images so in my head it's as simple as this um, uh, is anyone using Max? no? Okay, there's a little cool thing in Max that I also want to show it to you. Um, nowadays, like people are kind of arguing about whether to use Max or Maya, since you can always import and export everything you have in Maya, Max, Nuke. But I don't think it really matters anymore. So we are gonna kind of go over the same thing in Max, but it's gonna be a uh, little way simpler um, so whenever let's say my object is not in a correct spot I can always go to vertex mode and start playing with any one of them and this will keep projecting the image since this is um, coming from a camera and a texture this is not baked into any UV map or anything and also this doesn't have UV maps, uh, but we will also go over that in a minute. So let's go to Max. So in here they have a tool called Perspective Match. So let's say we have uh, downloaded a picture from online and we don't know the lens information, we don't know anything at all. If you were to project that in Maya, you need to adjust everything with manually. Uh, but in Max, they have this tool. Um, just going to quickly load in the exact same image that we had. Match the bitmap. So this is the same image that I had before. So I'm just going to quickly align this, but I'm not going to do much. And I'm just going to go to Perspective Match tool and show vanishing lines. So with this lines, all I need to do is adjust them to my background image and this will automatically give me the perfect camera and I can always export my cameras back to Maya, Nuke, doesn't really matter as long as I use FBX and Alembic file. OBJ doesn't support the camera and I think also Alembic doesn't support the changes that you make to your lens in Maya or Max. If you want to export them, you need to use FPX. 
but if you want just straight camera movement then Alembic works perfectly because you also have your geometry in the same file which we will go over in a minute after we adjust our um, camera and our geometry the next thing we need to do is set up layers um, what I mean by layers is if I project this exact same image to uh, the wall geometry and also this box geometry when I look at it in a 3D perspective I will see a smear uh, image that is just um, we can also do like a example of it um, I think we're done with Max for now we can go to our Maya file so let's say I also want to create another cube oh there was another cool that I wanted to show in Max okay I did something wrong now and that is moving the camera so I will go back and it's a step that I that we forgot to do is actually lock everything on the camera so that we don't accidentally move it and I did create a separate cube let's say and I'm adjusting and putting it into spot okay let's say I put that in here and I also want to add that add the same shader to it now if I go to my perspective I see this is floating in the air but when I look at it from my um, my camera it looks perfectly so this is a very important thing in camera projection like if you see an object in the picture as a box and it looks perfectly straight you need to create that shape in 3D in a kind of similar shape it shouldn't be floating should not be bended let's say we didn't adjust our lens perfectly what I would do to make this match perfectly it would be adding an a edge and trying to match that right which is not correct because I know this wall is perfectly straight in real world which I need to try to replicate it if I just put random objects that are fl floating in the air when I move my camera in the 3D view all of those objects are going to be floating it's not going to look real so I in order to match this perfectly I need to go to my perspective view and I can already see my result I can get that closer and put it in spot so let's say I did that and when I look at my background I'm also seeing the same image so I need to create separate images for this I need to have a wall texture that doesn't have this object I need to have this box object and oh, basically everything that I want to separate has to have separate maps so if we go back to what we had in this shot before so I had all these separate elements and I have the wall, I have the details, I have the door so all of them has different maps so creating them in Photoshop is extremely easy and there is a very quick tool that you can use which makes everything extremely easier um, so let's say I imported uh, my image original image and I want to get rid of the objects that um, I don't need in my wall projection so I will just go ahead and make selections of them okay I think it's enough 
So um, I'm just going to control C and control V and make a different separate layer for them and make a selection for this. Sorry. Okay, all I have to do is delete actually. So I have separate layers of it. But now I need to fill those gaps because I will project this image to the wall. So I will go to selection again and right click and just click fill. And we're just going to select the content of where and click OK. This will calculate the edges and those informations and try to fill these gaps with this. So you quickly get rid of almost all the objects in your scene. But you also have them in your previous layer, which you can always go back and use it. So I'm just going to export this as wall texture and export my original texture as my detail objects texture and whatever else that I wanted to have. Um, of course, this is not perfect, but it actually took us very far rather than using clone tool from the beginning. All you need to do is just clean those edges and make them seamlessly and rest should be fine. So if I create my separate objects and project them onto my shot, at the end what I will get is going to be something like this. Uh, just give me a second. So this is going to be our final uh, projected image. So I have all of them separately, but um, it's also important to note that I have the, this image, my original image, and what I have behind the door, because I have separate geometry for each of them. If I look at my uh, meshes in in the 3D view, I do have the wall mesh, I do have the details mesh, and I do have the behind the door mesh. And as you can see, all of them look like it's um, it's um, the real is not the correct word, but I'm just going to say it. So it looks real because all of them are in correct spot. There's nothing floating in the air. There's nothing looks weird or out of shape they all look exactly the same as what we had in the 2d image so we just recreated the exact same image so the next big important step is unwrapping um, within this um, projection none of these objects are unwrapped they all just have an, a UV map from the camera view but there's a difference between that so if we go back to our slide, um, so this is the differences between UV mapping and camera-based UV. Um, as you can see, the camera-based uh, UV is just um, a straight image. It looks almost as our original 2D image that we were working before. Um, this is fast, one-click process. Um, you just click um, UV and then uh, project the UVs from the camera. And But you only have this image to work in Photoshop afterwards. But if you do UV mapping, which takes a lot more time, uh, but then you have the flexibility to paint your maps easily, uh, which there's something else that I forgot to add in which is very important actually and that is projecting from a second camera let's say you had uh, a scene let's say you want to project this mouse for example you have a camera from here and you have another camera coming from here but if you use a camera based UV all you have to all you have is the pixel information, the UV information that is coming from this camera angle. So if you try to add more information that is coming from this camera angle, it's not going to change anything because you don't have that pixel information. It's not um, perfect. 
but if you unwrap everything perfectly then you can project as much as you want with as as many cameras as you want imagine a cargo package just a box right mm -hmm. I have the picture of it so let's say I created the camera and I adjusted my lens and everything mm -hmm. and I will project everything so I'm adjusting my camera and let's say my object looks something like this okay and when I project this and uh, it looks okay um, but let's say I have another camera angle that I have which I also shot with the same object and I want this angle as well to project but if I okay let's rename everything so that it kind of looks easier uh, projector in camera mm -hmm. zero one and I will create my second camera with the name two okay so I have one projection camera one and projection camera two let's say I adjusted both of them perfectly mm -hmm. and I'm going to my first projection cam I will just go to my UV map since this is a box this is already unwrapped perfectly mm -hmm. but let's say this was a complex object which wasn't perfectly unwrapped so the there's two things I can do one is going to my UV menu and go to uh, camera based per, uh, UV map so I can go apply and close and this gives me this UV map which is just from my camera angle if I project this everything looks perfect because it's from the same camera angle but if I want to project my second image from this camera angle mm -hmm. it's not going to work because I don't have this information from the back side mm -hmm. so that's the huge difference between UVing and using the camera based UV but if I have um, if I had uh, unwrapped this perfectly for the sake of speed I'm just going to do the automatic one if I do it this way now I have um, perfect resolution for each faces so I can project from this angle and also from this angle doesn't make any difference in terms of resolution um, and that's why we have this difference in here let's say I want to delete this 4 and change it with 6 or 10 or delete this completely I can also do that in Photoshop and just use this as my texture rather than projecting and projecting and projecting again so baking may allows me to get rid of my camera oh I, I think I made a list here yeah allows me to delay, delete all my projection camera and all its nodes that I had in Maya and um, allows me to use my final geo and texture in any software that I want I can like since I have the unwrapped geometry with my baked texture I can just import that into Max, Maya, Unity, anything this allows me to use that baked texture as my diffuse channel so that I can create a new shader as you can see this is our 2D image that we had and this is our projection camera this is our projection node this is the geometry and this is the scan line render and this is our texture resolution um, we shot um, a green screen footage So if you track this um, footage and get the camera movement into Maya, so if I scrub through, this is the exact same camera movement that I have in, in this shot. So I just tracked it in, in Nuke and just imported it into Maya. So I have that camera movement. But my object is still, it's not moving. But let's say I have a moving footage with moving camera. So it actually offsets each other. It looks um, like as if it was not moving. If I project that information to a not moving object, then I have this um, face, but not with just a single um, 
single uh, image. It's actually a sequence. So we can even take a look at the script. As you can see, it's the exact same method. Only difference is, instead of having a single image in here, I do have the video, this video in here. So I'm projecting the video sequence with my moving camera to my still object. Then I have something that looks like this. And since I bake, bake that, I can always import that as my diffuse layer. And, and you'll know, like, making a perfectly realistic character is extremely hard. But with this method, you can always fake it and just put it inside something, whatever you want. What are the possibilities? Like, what you can do with this? Let's say I want to make a shot where my character has, um, has, has a tattoo on, on, on her face. Rather than tracking it in 2D and trying to place it perfectly and then rotating out the faces or anything that goes in front of the face, I can just use Grid Warp tool and put that texture onto my UV. Since I projected that onto a 3D object, it'll just work and look perfectly fine. You can, do, you can do anything you want with this because it's in 3D space. You, you own the character now. It's not in 2D space where you, you have to adjust, make adjustments. It's not like that. You, you are in 3D space. You can do whatever you want. And that's actually how they did this shot in this movie. And they also have breakdowns for this. Like This is how they did this shot. They have the 3D face, and they just added 2D objects to the um, images or footages that of this mod. Something like this. It's, it's, kind, it's the exact same face with the exact same projection method. And of course, they did a lot more work than what, what I have in here. Um, so let's say I wanted to add this mod to my character. What would I do is just have this footage or paint it in Photoshop and just go to my UV map and put that image in here. That's it. And it's just the same projection. Um, and also making paint fixes is also really easy in here. Let's say um, I wanted to get rid of something on, on her face. And all I need to do is do that in, in, in my UV map, which is extremely easier. Uh, yeah, I will go over 3ds Max just a second again because there's another cool thing in here. I'm, I'm like, uh, I don't know if it's a good thing to push everyone to Max, but if it's faster and if it works and you can always export everything else to anything, any other software you want, then I think it's better to know. Um, and it, it's, it's again another 3D software, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, you're not learning every, anything from scratch again. Okay, let's say I have this. I'm just going to do like a poor job, like a very simple one. Let's say everything matches perfectly. Um, okay. So what what we do in Maya is we create the uh, whole shift right click and we create a cube and we have a cube in here. We scale it. We put it in spot. You adjust it to the wall. You make sure it's it's. Uh, it's on top of the wall and you adjust its scale and everything um, but if you want to do it in max you go to your box and you click this thing called auto grid this looks at every single face as if it was the grid every, if I go here it looks at as if it, that's the grid that's the grid so um, let's say um, I had this object in there Note that I didn't adjust the camera perfectly. I'm just, just doing this sake of 
first example. Mm -hmm. so all I have to do is actually go here and left click. This looks at that as my grid and I can just give that a depth and it's already perfectly on top of my geometry. I can always go to my perspective view and look at it in here. As you can see, it, it's just right on, spot on, like on top of the object. Mm -hmm. Is it just like yours? Mm -hmm. A lot of fights, a lot of flops. And I'm trying to think, uh, not an easy way, but that's the way to make it. Okay, I will show you something in here. Let's say I'm looking at this in here, and somehow I don't think this object is not holding up. I want this to look 3D as well. Okay. So I look that in here, and then I go back to Maya, create that object, then I send it back to Nuke, which is like even importing and exporting an object takes time. Um, but if you exp if you do this projection in Maya, you can always just go like a shift right click, create another cube, put it in the spot, and assign the same shader that you had on here to the new box that you created. Then you you just immediately see, oh, I think it's enough now. And then you just move on. So at the end of everything, let's say you're happy with your projection, everything looks fine, you don't want anything else to look 3D anymore, and then you just export everything at once to Nuke, and then be done with it. Yeah. But if you go back and forth with Nuke, it'll take a lot longer. I think it's better to um, start because projecting the same image with the same re information in Maya as well just to have it. The thing is, um, it, it opens so many possibilities. Um, let's say my character turned her head um, 5 degrees, but I wanted 25. Let's say I wanted my character to turn her head a lot more. Then what I can do is create a rig. Okay. So this is my projection camera, and this is my geometry. Since I had that rig created, whenever I move this, my projection camera also moves with it because um, if I leave my projection camera in here it's still gonna think that our geometry is always in the same spot and it's not moving then your projection is gonna slip so in order to keep that in the exact, exact same spot I'm just linking that camera to my rig then what I have is I'm looking at it from my um, render camera now. Like, I just turned my character a lot more than what she turned before, right? So, she was looking like this. When I look at it, looks perfect. Okay, fine, but I want more. And I'm turning it a lot more, and it still holds up. It still looks fine. Um, so that's how I actually made a separate move that, that for that face. Okay. Any other questions? It's boring enough and it's sunny outside, so let's just be done with this. <laughs> yep. Thank you very much. And you can um, reach out to me from here whenever you want.